Uh, hi, welcome back uh, to Mull Aquarium. Uh, so, we've just started a new uh, mini-series. Um, we really enjoyed uh, doing our behind-the-scenes videos um, so much, we started a new one. Um, this one is called our Feature Feature. Um, so, each week we're going to be talking about one of our favourite animals uh, in the aquarium. Um, this week it's my choice. Um, and I'm a little bit weird, I don't go for the big, shiny, kind of fluffy poster creatures. Um, I've actually chosen um, a type of sea slug. Uh, now, uh, for those of you who know me, um, I actually really hate land slugs. Don't want anything to do with them. Slugs in the garden, don't want to touch them. Chuck a bit of colour on it and put it in some salt water um, and they are one of my absolute favourite marine creatures. Um, so today we're going to be looking at um, uh, the, the best one, in my opinion, uh, which is a sea hare. Um, these guys are amazing. Um, I've got a couple um, on the TV up there. Um, they're a type of mollusk, so they're in the mollusk family. Um, and this is a type of slug that, on its back, uh, it has uh, two kind of large uh, kind of flaps of skin. In the middle of these skins, there is a shell. So they have a small, it's kind of like thumbnail sized uh, shell, so that's how we know it's a mollusk. And they're called sea hares because they've got fantastic little um, kind of like rabbit ears off the top of their heads. Um, and they are normally red. Um, so when sea hares are little, um, they eat seaweed. They eat seaweed throughout their lives, but when they're small, it's really important. Um, it kind of determines what colour they're going to be. Most sea hares, when they're adults, are this maroony colour. We can get some paler version of greeny brown seaweed, uh, sea hares, and they were the ones that would have been eating green seaweed as the uh, babies. So the ones that we have are really red. Uh, so uh, just pop the camera back on there so we can have a look. So on the screen up here, oops, keep going. there we go, there's our lovely, uh, oh, good job we have a waterproof case on the phone. <laughs> you can never predict what's going to happen when you go live. Come up and have a closer look instead. Uh, so actually, this demonstrates perfectly what I was going to tell you about. So in this tank, we have got some sea hairs. Um, and, uh, I don't know if you can see this one here, is actually producing ink. So, uh, for one of our Facebook Live problems, uh, when you drop a phone on a sea hare, they react badly. Uh, so this one here is producing plumes of uh, purple ink. Uh, it's kind of uh, sticky. Um, they use it to ward off their predators. So if a predator uh, was coming near them, say a lobster or a crab, they would um, eject this ink and it covers the crab's, um, basically, nose. It kind of gives them a blocked up nose. They can't smell the sea hair. Um, so this one here is doing our lovely bright purple ink. Um, one of the best days ever was when I went rock pooling and I got inked on by a sea hair. So this uh, sea hair here is about um, normal size for a sea hair in this country, one you'd find in a rock pool. Um, here's my ruler. It's kind of about six, seven centimeters um, long. Uh, obviously, in rock pools, you can find them a lot smaller, but this, when fully stretched out, is a pretty big sea hare. Um, over on the other side of the tank, munching down on his breakfast, is probably the biggest sea hare we've ever seen. So this big fella, if I just see if I lift him out, you can act, even though he's going to scrunch up like a potato, you'll be able to see just how big he is. Uh, so he's completely retracted into, his, uh, into himself there. This guy is about 20 centimetres when fully stretched out. Um, and that's about as big as they get. We've never seen one this big. This one was caught in a, in a Mull Aquarium creel, just hanging out in there. He's really retracting in now. But while he's retracting in, we can have a look really nicely on his back. These overlapping bits um, here is where the vestigial shell is. And off of the face are his uh, little antennae. Um, this one is much more brown than the one that is inked in our tank. Um, so when he was little, it was probably eating uh, 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 kind of ready brown green uh, seaweeds. Uh, it would have been rather a mix instead of just red seaweeds. Um, now I just called this one a he. It's actually not a he. These amazing slugs are actually hermaphrodites. Um, that means they are both male and female. Um, so, uh, these guys will act as both male and female when mating, um, and they form uh, what's known as mating chains. Um, so, they uh, kind of all line up on top of each other, kind of like piggybacking um, and in a mating chain. 
Um, getting the best of both worlds. Uh, if, you, if you're a sea slug, the best place to be in a mating chain is in the middle. Um, these guys, um, as you can tell, uh, are really, really one of our favourite creatures in here. We love having them in here. Um, this big guy uh, is going to eat through the seaweed we've got in here super fast. We're going to have to feed him loads of seaweed um, to keep up with him. He might even grow a little bit bigger. Um, why not hop down this weekend and have a look at these amazing sea creatures um, and some of our other ones in here and suggest maybe what we should uh, do a feature creature on next week. See you then!